Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is number 51, 3D shapes, cones and spheres and cylinders. And it is part of my IGCSE exam questions series. Give these questions a go. If you find it useful, please do like the video. Let's get into the maths. Okay, right, tricky questions straight off the bat. Um, we have a hemisphere, which has a, um, a radius of R, and we've got a cylinder, which has a radius of 2R. And it says, um, and it says that the total surface area of the hemisphere is equal to the surface area of the cylinder. Okay, so a hemisphere looks like this. In your formula booklet, you're told that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi um, r squared. So a hemisphere, we're going to half that to make 2 pi r squared. But in halving it and splitting it in half, you are now exposing the uh, lid of the hemisphere which is a circle, so we're going to have to add on pi r squared. So the total surface area of a hemisphere, a hemisphere is 3 pi r squared. And the curved surface area of a cylinder, that's given again in your formula booklet. The curved surface area is just 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle, multiplied by the height. But because the cylinder the radius is twice the size of the hemisphere's radius. If I call the hemisphere's radius r, then I'm going to have to call the cylinder's radius 2r. So therefore the cylinder surface area is pi um, 4 pi r h. And we're told these two things are equal. So I've got 3 pi r squared is equal to 4 pi r h. I can um, uh, cancel through by pi and also divide through by an r to get this. And this then tells me that h is equal to 3r over 4. Okay, great. Now it says, given that the volume of the hemisphere to the volume of the cylinder is 1 to m, find the value of m. So I've got to work out the volumes of these. So let's first off start by working out the volume of a hemisphere. Well, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so a hemisphere is 2 thirds pi r cubed. And the volume of a cylinder is just the uh, circle, so pi r squared times by height. But remember, we can't use r um, for the cylinder because it's actually twice the value of this r. So it's going to be pi 2 r squared times by height, and the height is 3r over 4, as we worked out here. OK, so uh, let's simplify this first. Um, 2 pi, 2r squared is actually 4r squared, because 2r times by itself is 4r squared. So we're going to have pi times by 4r squared times by 3 over 4r. So timesing by 4 and dividing by 4 are going to cancel. So this is going to give me 3 pi and an r cubed. Right, we've got to set up our, um, our ratio. So we're going to want the uh, hemisphere dotted uh, colon with the, um, with the cylinder. So we write 2 thirds pi r cubed dot dot 3 pi r cubed. Uh, we can cancel the r cubes on both sides, we can cancel the pi's on both sides. So our ratio is 2 thirds to 3 and we want it uh, 1 to m so I'm going to times both sides by 3 and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and I get 1 to 4.5. So m is equal to 4.5. Okay, we have a um, sphere and a cylinder. The radius of the sphere is r, the radius of the cylinder is r, and the height of the cylinder is 2r. The total surface area of the cylinder is what we need to work out. Well, the total surface area of any cylinder is the curved surface area plus the lid and the base which are both circles. So there are two of them, and the circle is pi r squared. 
So this is 2 pi r, and the h in this case is 2 r. And multiplying up these brackets is going to give me 4 pi r squared plus 2 pi r squared is a total of 6 pi r squared. And we're told that that is equal to k pi. So therefore, k is equal to, uh, just take off the pi, so 6r squared. And that is an expression for k in terms of r. Um, part B of this question, I'm just going to write here, um, sorry, it says show that the ratio of the total surface area of the cylinder to the total surface area of the sphere is the same as the ratio of the volume of the cylinder to the volume of the sphere. Okay, so let's remind ourselves that we worked out already the total surface area of the cylinder and that was 6 pi r squared. And the total surface area of a uh, sphere is given in your formula booklet, and that is 4 pi r squared. So dividing both sides by r squared and dividing both sides by pi gives us 6 to 4, which is the same as 3 to 2. Now we need to work out the volume of the cylinder. And just to remind you that the cylinder looked like this. It had a radius of r, and it had a height of 2r. So therefore the volume is going to be the circle multiplied by the height, and the circle is pi r squared multiplied by 2r, which is going to simplify down to 2 pi r cubed. And the volume of a sphere is given in your formula booklet. That's uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the ratio of the cylinder, which is 2 pi r cubed, to the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We can get rid of the r cubes and we can get rid of the pi's. We can times both sides by 3, which gives me 6 to 4, which simplifies down to 3 to 2. And they are the same. OK, tricky question. We've got a frustrum of a cone and a sphere. Uh, a frustrum is a larger cone with the smaller similar cone chopped off the, the top. And we've got all the measurements um, given to us and also on the diagram. And it says that given that the two volumes are equal, find an expression for R in terms of H. So I'm going to start off by working out the volume of the frustrum. And I'll start by working out the volume of the total uh, cone um, if there was nothing taken away. So the volume of a cone is um, 1 whoops, is one third pi r squared times by its height, which in this case is 2h. But then to get the frustum, I've got to take away this cone. Now, because the, um, the height of the first cone is 2h, and the height of the smaller cone that needs to be taken away is 1h, the scale factor is 1 to 2. Uh, and that means that the radius here um, will be half uh, so the radius of the smaller cone will be half that of the uh, the larger one. So that's 0 0.5r. So if I take away the smaller cone, it will be 1 third pi. Um, the r will be 0 0.5r, which will need to be squared, and then multiplied by h. And we're told that's equal to the volume of a sphere, which we're given in our formula booklet is 4 thirds pi r cubed. OK, great. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is to uh, divide every term by pi. And then multiply every term by 3. And that will give us 
that will timesing of term by three will, do, will get rid of the third, get rid of the third, and get rid of the divide by three there. So let's see what we've got now. We've got part. We've got r squared two h, which is two h r squared. We've got minus um, zero point five squared is a quarter. So zero point two five. Um, r squared h and that's equal to 4r cubed okay so how many um, r squared h's have we got we've got 2 minus a quarter over here so 2 minus um, a quarter is 7 over 4 so we've got 7 over 4 uh, h r squareds or r squared h's same thing and that's equal to 4r cubed I can divide through by um, r squared to get 7 over 4 h is equal to 4 r. And then finally, it wants me to find r in terms of h, so I can divide both sides by 4. And dividing 7 over 4 by 4 gives me 7 over 16. So it's 7 over 16 h is equal to r, and that's our final answer. Uh, we have a cone and we are told that the area of the base of the cone to the total surface area of the cone is 3 to 8. So I'm going to start by writing out the area of the base of the cone, which is a circle, which will be pi r squared. And that ratio is to the total surface area. So the total surface area is going to be the base, which is pi r squared, plus the curved surface area, which you are told in your formula sheet, and that is pi r times l, where l is the slanted height of the cone. And we're told that that is uh, 3 uh, to 8. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to say that pi r squared, that's equal to 3 shares. And if pi r squared is equal to 3 shares, and we've got pi r squared on this side, it means that pi r l must be 5 to make up the 8. So I can say that pi r l is equal to uh, 5 shares. And the next and the really key point here is that I can solve these equations simultaneously, or to a certain extent, and the best way of doing that is to um, divide one by the other. So I'm going to do pi r l divided by pi r squared. Now this is going to be the same as, well, pi r l is 5 and pi r squared is 3. So now I can divide... Um, top and bottom by pi to cancel that and I can also cancel the r and that will leave me with just one r on the bottom. So this gives me that l over r is equal to 5 over 3 and then I can multiply both sides by 3 and multiply both sides by r which will give me 3l is equal to 5r. And that tells me that L is equal to 5 thirds R. And that's really helpful because now I can draw a right angle triangle on my cone. And that will be a right angle in there. This down the bottom will be R, just the radius of the circle. And L I can replace with 5 thirds R. And I'm going to call this angle at the top theta because that's going to be really helpful in getting us our, um, our angle AVB. So I can write that sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's R over 5 thirds R. And because we've got an R on the top and the bottom of this fraction, I can divide through by R. And that will leave me with just one on the top. 
So theta is going to equal the inverse sine of 1 over 5 thirds. So I can go to my calculator and I can do the inverse sine of 1 over 5 thirds. And this gives me 36.9. And the angle AVB is equal to just 2 thetas, which is equal to 2 times 36.9. So our answer is 73.7. Bosh. What a question. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do like the video and subscribe to my channel for more GCSE content. Bye for now.